I call the Honourable Minister Jonathan Coleman. Mr. Speaker, that was a great speech from a new member. I think that shows the depth that the National Party is bringing into this Parliament. And I want to uh, congratulate Claudette Hawiti for pointing out some of the realities of what this national government have achieved for Maori. And I can tell you what, that is why the Labour Party are going to get their backsides kicked in the by-election come this Saturday at Ikarau Rapiti, because they have not delivered for Maori on that side of the House. And one of the big reasons is, when you pick up the front page of the Herald today and you see this picture of David Shearer banging his head against the wall, that is not something that inspires confidence. It, I knew it had happened. Uh, point of order, the Honourable Trevor Mallard. Speaker, I, was, um, I wasn't present in the House earlier. I think you're, are you allowed to refer to your own absence? I think you are. I was, I, was, I was away a little earlier, Mr Speaker, but I thought uh, that the Speaker, uh, it appeared on the radio at least, uh, that he was ruling against the continued use of a device by Mr Hanari, and it indicated to Mr Hanari if he held it up again, he would be required to leave the House. He has, sir. Well, all I can say is that order, 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 order. All I can say is that uh, refer members to uh, standing order 1092, which is to do with visual aids. It, should, it says they should only be displayed when a member is speaking and must be removed at the conclusion. Now, the member is not speaking. He cannot display a visual aid, and he should know that. I was here when he was sent before. I take the, all members are honourable, and I accept the member's word. I call it and order, 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 order. Point of order, the Honourable Trevor Mallard. Uh, Mr Speaker, the member most certainly held up a, a placard or a, with, a, with a figure on it, sir. I didn't see what he was holding up earlier. Uh, Mr Speaker, he order. held it up here, but I assume point it was a thing that he was required not to on warning that he'd be kicked out of the House. Right. Uh, Mr Speaker, a repeat offender, I think that's a naming offence. Oh, order. All I can say is that the member has given me his word that he didn't do it. All members are honourable. If, if it's other order, 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 if it is otherwise, then there is the possibility of breach of privilege. I call the honourable Jonathan Coleman. Well, Mr Speaker, I think that just shows that when Trevor Mallard's order, in the House, order, let's go order, bad. order. Sorry, Mr Coleman, you can start again. I know the members on both sides of the House love each other, but courtesy is contagious. So let's try and work it two together. I call the honourable minister. Jonathan, the, minute, the member? Point of order, Mr. Uh, point of order the Honourable Mr. Jonathan Speaker, Coleman. I'm about 45 seconds into a five-minute speech, and I would request that you reset my time to zero. Order, because order, we're constantly facing order. this disruptive member be of order. The member, if the member had listened, I actually said that. I call the Honourable Jonathan Coleman. Excellent. So this... Order. Speaker, since when, when a member on his own side misbehaves, does a member get an extra three quarters of a minute? That, that, sir, it's an outrageous ruling. Order, order. There have been enough interjections and enough points of order. I've heard enough. What I want is what everyone in this world wants, and that is order. I call the honourable member Jonathan Coleman. For five minutes, I presume. Mr Speaker, this is a very bad day for the Labour Party. You cannot ignore a poll rating like you have seen on the front page of the Herald today. And what are they at? They are at 30 per cent. And David Shearer, I don't know if you saw TV3 this morning, but David Shearer was asked, what is he going to do differently? And he said, absolutely nothing. We're going to do everything exactly the same. We're not going to change anything. And there's only one guy who I reckon will be the beneficiary of this, and he's been very uh, slyly smiling away, quite undisturbed for all this, and that is Grant Robertson, because he has been put political arsenic in David Shearer's tea for the last 18 months and it's starting to pay off because David Shearer, poor man, is just about dead on his feet. And I tell you, David Shearer's actually a very good bloke. I like the guy. He used to be one of my constituents. He voted for me. He used to uh, engage very well in conversation. He's a very decent man. But he would be praying. He would be saying... How can I get out of this? How can I get back to the Middle East, to the jungles of Rwanda? Because this is not going well. And I just want to get out of here with some dignity. But when you look at the options, they're not great. And I think we've got a few of them here. Six people here, 
Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think five of them haven't got a day's business experience between them. David Parker, I'll make an exception for. But you've got Grant Robertson there. Now, is this man unelectable or not? This is a guy you can take around the cafes and the nightclubs of Wellington Central, but I can tell you, take him to the Glenfield Mall or the Northcote Tavern where I'm from, and it just ain't going to work. Annette King, very nice lady, total retread. Next time will be her third time round. Darian Fenton. She marks me in Northcote, and I encourage her to do more door knocking in my electorate. It's something we should have more of. Trevor Mallard, well, we've seen today when Trevor's in the House, Mr Mallard, things go wrong. I actually had quite a high opinion of David Clark until that incident ten days ago when he yelled an insult, knew he was in the wrong, and went running out the door, running away. And then he realised, he realised that it didn't look good to run out of the House so he came back under Trevor Mallard's tutelage and he apologised. So he's definitely not up to it because he can't face up in the House and take his medicine. So that's a real shame because that was a young man with some promise. And of course, Trevor Mallard, need we say more? In fact, I wish Trevor Mallard would come and do some door knocking in my electorate. That would be the ultimate. That would really get the party vote going. But what I want to say, Mr Speaker, is that group over there, they are focusing on the things that don't matter to New Zealand. They focus on the parliamentary bickering, they focus on the points of order, they focus on the backbiting and select committee. And you know what? Actually, the general public don't watch any of that stuff. But what the public know is under the national government, when their kid is sick, the under sixes get a free doctor's visit. When they need to get cancer treatment for their mother-in-law, their grandparent, Within four weeks, they're getting that treatment in Australia. When Annette King was Health Minister, it took weeks and weeks and weeks, and people died on waiting lists. And their answer in the end was to kick everyone off the waiting list. What you can see today, the OECD the report on education, New Zealand is doing excellently. And the work that my colleague Anne Tolly did around national standards, these guys said it would never work. But it does work because we're connecting with parents and parents know that it's the right thing to do. If you look at law and order, 600 more cops on the streets. The cops love the Minister of Police. They're glad to be rid of that tawdry lot who were in government before who had no regard for the police and still show that when Trevor Mallard gets up in a select committee and abuses a public servant, ab abuses Mike Bush, the Deputy Commissioner of Police, which is totally unfair because Mike Bush can't talk back. And that is not the mark of people who you would ever want in government. Those people over there are a disgrace. But meanwhile, who have you got that can unite the Labor Party? There's one man. It's David, uh, David Cunliffe. They are united in their hatred of him. It's the one thing they all agree. They don't want David Cunliffe as leader or prime minister. So when you look at it, it's pretty bad news over there. But we're focusing on rebuilding Christchurch. Billions of dollars going into there. 50,000 new jobs in the last four years. We're very focused on getting the public service actually getting something productive happening. The Mr. time Speaker, for this it's all good news. expired. Honourable Members, the, I understand it is the Government's intention to introduce an Impress Supply Bill. Impress Supply, first for 2013-14 Bill, introduction.